Good morning, y'all. Thank you for, for being here this morning. And thank you to Sean for that, that lovely talk just now. I learned a whole lot about uh, city parks. And I think there's some connections that I'm going to try and point out in a minute. Um, I'm Taylor Rich. I use they them pronouns. I'm from the Institute for Transportation and Development Policy. I'll tell you a bit more about that in a minute. But first, something I don't think we want to spend too much time thinking about, but we have to acknowledge climate change. Um, it's already hot enough here in Tucson. It's getting hotter. Uh, ITP is a global NGO dedicated to sustainable and inclusive urban transportation. I'm going to give full time just to get here. In the <clears throat> so last year, we worked with UC Davis to study the possible futures of urban transportation. We found that electric cars are necessary for preventing the worst effects of climate change, but they are not sufficient. In order to meet the Paris Agreement and prevent, have any chance at all of preventing climate change of more than one and a half degrees Celsius by the end of the century, we need both maximum, maximum vehicle electrification and maximum, maximum modal shift from all kinds of cars to walking, bicycling, and public transit. There is no way to meet our climate goals without deeply changing the way that we build our cities and the way that we move around. And I think that OpenStreetMap is an essential tool in changing the way that we build and move around our cities. Um, and so I'm going to be talking about ICP's ongoing efforts to use OpenStreetMap to empower both advocates and city planners, especially in the regions where we work, which are city, big cities in low and middle income countries. We have regional offices everywhere from Mexico City to Jakarta. Um, but even though I'm standing up here at the front of the room today, I'm actually more or less an OpenStreetMap novice. Um, I'm a consumer of OSM data. You know, I use OSM and X, and I, I pull data and do some analysis. But I don't know a whole lot about mapping, and I don't know a whole lot about the like really technical tools that people use for their analysis. So I came to Tucson to learn from you all, and I, I hope that you'll be looking at this and thinking about ways that you can offer guidance or that, that you can help. Um, so what do I, the title of this talk is Closing the Loop, which is a little confusing. Um, but right now, we've got this sort of linear situation, right, where we've got advocates pushing for change, transit, biking, walking, whatever. Today, I'm going to be focusing on bicycling. Um, they push on city planners. City planners build infrastructure, mappers, update that infrastructure in OSM, and then it sits there in this database. And especially in the, the global south cities where we work, the OpenStreetMap data is often very low quality. Um, you know, it varies between countries, um, but, and there's really not a lot of feedback from OSM back into planning, with one exception, and that's Brazil. And why is Brazil an exception? It didn't used to be. Uh, even a couple of years ago, the situation was really clunky. Every uh, city had its own way of mapping bicycle infrastructure. They weren't interoperable, they weren't standardized, they were hard to download, hard to access, hard to analyze. Like, couldn't benchmark. Um, and then the Brazilian Cyclists Union, UCB, worked with I, a little bit of support from ITDP Brazil's office to put together Ciclomapa, which is a web interface. Uh, I think you can go to it right now. I think it's Um And it aggregates OSM data for cycling in every city in Brazil and presents it in this really easy to use interface along with these indicators of cycling in the city, which allow for benchmarking. You can compare Rio de Janeiro to Sao Paulo, to Fortaleza, to Recife, and see which cities are moving the fastest on cycling, which we found is really important for pushing cities to move faster. Um, so this is great. It is only in Brazil. Um, and this, this really does close the loop. And it also helps empower these advocates. The advocates go on Ciclomapa and they see We've got this data. Where's this data coming from? It's coming from OpenStreetMap. And actually, I think you can even see up at the top there, the uh, collaborator. <coughs> there's a link to some OSM editing edits. Um, 
in Portuguese. Um, <laughs> and so let's take the map close to the loop. It lets you compare your city to others. Media love top 10 lists. This is something we've learned. Uh, and so now ITTP's global team is stepping it up, going beyond Brazil, going beyond cycling, and we're going to be building a new platform for the entire world, uh, which we're going to call the Atlas of Urban Transport. Um, which is going to use the same idea, pulling data from OSM, analyzing it, and presenting it back in an easy-to-use format to empower people on the ground. Um, this is part of our Cycling Cities campaign. I don't really have time to get too much into this, but we're focusing on protected cycle lanes. We're working with, working very closely with 28 cohort cities and working indirectly with hopefully up to 300 more, um, focusing on increasing the number of people living near safe bicycle lanes. This matters a lot more than simple kilometers of bicycle lane, for reasons that should, it should be obvious. Bicycle lane not near people isn't doing anyone any good. Um, and so we call this metric PNB or PNPB for protected bike lanes. Um, and you know, it's easy to calculate. You just pull the OSM data for cycleway equals track or highway equals cycleway. You do a little network distance buffer and you compare that to a population density map. Uh, this is Istanbul. Um, and I want a quick note here. We think that we use PNB, uh, people near bikeways. It hits a really nice middle ground of like, it's easy to communicate, the mayor can understand it, uh, and it's really meaningful. I'm also interested in other more complicated indicators like access to destinations by bicycling um, that I think reflect the value of the bike network even better. They're more difficult to calculate and more difficult to communicate, but if you are interested in access to destinations indicators, talk to me afterward. Um, so we want cities to, to increase the percentage of people near cycle lanes. Here's a couple of target cities and the examples of, of where they're at and where they should be. Um, and we're going to be building this Atlas of Urban Transport. As I mentioned, um, we're selecting the consultant this week. Uh, we're hoping to release it in October. Um, and you know, start simple, a couple of key indicators. Hopefully it's going to be modular and we'll add more indicators as we can calculate them. But here are some of the indicators that we're hoping to include right now. Um, land use, walkability, cycling, transit, and some things about cars, trying to bring people away from cars. Um, and I think this is actually where the connection to Sean's talk really comes in. There are some things like benches, tree cover, sidewalks, that, that a lot of us would consider micro-mapping, but are actually really essential to understanding walkability in a city. And so I would love to include like a percentage of people near benches or trees and right now the data quality is just not there. Um, so we need more of, well I wouldn't even call it micro mapping, we need more detailed mapping to understand walkability. Um, and if you've got any other thoughts for things we can calculate, come talk to me. Um, but yeah, it all comes back to this wheel, right? So the, the taking OSM data and calculating indicators for the atlas that's just one rotation of the wheel, right? We also care about all the other parts, and ITDP is really invested in making sure that everything rotates smoothly here. Um, so we're going to be working with, we're going to be working mostly through our regional offices to empower city governments and advocates to understand and be able to edit OSM. Um, we were talking in the Is OSM a Movement session uh, yesterday evening. And I think that one of the messages we always focus on when we're talking to people who are new to OSM is just how easy it is to edit. Thanks to amazing work on the ID editor and other tools, it's, it's really accessible. And we need to get that message out there, that it's not some scary technical thing, it's a thing anyone can use. Um, and just last week, we had a webinar. Uh, 200 people attended. That's a new record for an ITDP global webinar, so people are really interested in this. Um, and we're getting a really nice mix of world regions and uh, sectors. Um, so that's, that's where I'm at with the Atlas of Urban Transport and closing the loop. Um, here are my questions for you. Um, first, is there any way to get and I, I was having a good conversation about this yesterday evening, but more nuanced tagging for walkways and cycleways, the open sidewalks folks out of the University of Washington, if any of them are here today, I would love to meet them, um, have really done a good job on this sort of sidewalks, but mapping isn't really keeping up. Um, 
we need better tagging for cycle width. I'll talk more about that in a minute. Thank you. Um, what are the best techniques, especially in all kinds of languages, for introducing new people to OSM and empowering them to use it and edit it? Um, how to connect to existing OSM communities um, in, the, in the Global South, in these cities, and, and work with them to, to focus on mapping what really matters for transportation in their cities. Um, and how do you, this is really my question for you, how do you get city officials to trust OSM? We've had this problem in Rio de Janeiro where the city government has its own data set on cycling that's slightly different from OSM's and they just refuse to, to work with Ciclo Um So how do, we, how do we get city governments, especially transportation officials, bought in on OpenStreetMap? Um, I'm going to dive a little bit deeper into this uh, tagging issue. Um, so this is the tagging system that SQL Mappa uses and that we're going to be using at the global level. Um, it works pretty well. It's got this nice division, sort of, if cycleway is track or highway is cycleway, we consider it fully physically protected. Um, if cycleway is lane, we consider it painted lane. Anything else, ICP Global doesn't really consider serious cycling infrastructure. Um, and honestly, we don't even consider painted lanes to be a really meaningful investment. Um, and so this looks good on paper. What's it look like on the ground? Ooh, cycleway equals lane. So this left one is from around here in Tucson. I would not have guessed that that was a bicycle lane <laughs> until I saw that it was tagged as that on the street map. The right two are both from Fortaleza. Um, and they're both tagged as cycleway equals lane, but the right one clearly has some protection with these bollards. The left one has at least these little bumps. That's different from an ordinary painted lane. Uh, shouldn't there be a little bit more nuance here? Um, and then this one, these three are all tagged as highway to cycleway. They're all from within about a mile and a half of each other in Washington, DC. Um, the two on the left are actually from parallel streets. And somehow they're both tagged as fully protected cycleways, which is, I mean, like clearly wrong even within OS existing guidance. But like, shouldn't we have some more nuanced tagging for, you know, is it separated by several feet of trees and concrete, or is it separated by parked cars or plastic bollards or what? So, if you've got any ideas who I need to talk to 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 figure this out and get this into OSM so people can start mapping. Um, really want to work on that. Uh, that's all I was planning to say, and now I want to listen to you. If you've had any questions or any immediate thoughts, um, and I'll be around after this talk and at lunch and for the whole rest of the day. And please just come talk to me about this. <laughs>